watching Thrifty Kniffy. Hello everyone and welcome to Thrifty Kniffy. Well today I'm going to be shooting sort of a raw video. Uh, this is going to be in an unedited form. It might be a little longer than most of my videos. So hopefully you're prepared to sit down and watch something of a little more length. But what I'm going to do today is just show how I clean up my Swiss Army knives. Now these are ones that I typically buy off of eBay. They're going to come in rather rough and dirty condition. You can see here like inside the liners. All kinds of muck in there. Um, this one's kind of broken so I'm going to show you how I'm going to take off the scales. Normally I don't in, uh, actually encourage anyone to take the scales off unless there's just absolutely a reason. While you may not get all the dirt from underneath them, um, I don't really feel like they interfere with the use of the knife, and so it just sort of can, can reside in there without ever causing issues. But if you're set on doing the most thorough work and getting everything spotless, then I will show you just how you can remove the scales off of these in a pretty simple manner. And so let's get into the tools that I'm going to be using. So first off, we have the Swiss Army knife. I'm going to be using the can opener. And when I take those scale tools off, so it looks like somebody attempted to do it already and failed at it. But you just simply get the uh, can opener underneath like this and just sort of pry up slowly. And they pop off pretty easily. You can see that that is well worth getting into to clean up. Now, if they're this dirty, you know, do what you got to do. But you can see that even the tweezers are stuck in there. And so those are going to need a bath. And those are going to need a bath. And that's going to need a bath. Okay. Well, actually, let's do the other scale before I go and dunk it in there. Um, actually, that scale doesn't look too bad, but I'm betting there's probably some gunk under there as well. But we just go at the top edge. And if you need like sort of a... Uh, oh, I was going from the wrong side. Going from the key ring side that's my recommendation try to avoid the areas where there's the toothpick if i can wedge this in there it can be a little bit of a pill sometimes especially if it's tight as i said this is going to be kind of unedited so all in its raw form Maybe we start down here more to the center. Of course, it's wet now. I'm going to make it twice as hard as it would have been. Okay, so we'll just get in there like that. And we'll just kind of wiggle this top portion loose. Trying not to break it. In fact, I think there's a crack in the scale. Yeah, there is. So this is probably going to have to be replaced anyway, so... Not a massive deal if I happen to damage it, but basically if you got a tight one like this, you get the one edge off at the top. They're going to be a rivet here, a rivet here, and here. So it's best to work from this end down because it gives you a lot more space. And then you just get your tool in there. Just kind of work that free. You get one more rivet, and then you can kind of just use your hand at that point. But yeah, you can see just how nasty those are. Toothpick is kind of sticking in there as well. We're just going to throw all that in the bath. And then we'll continue to show the rest of the tool. So one of the primary tool, and the one I recommend most, is to use Dawn dish soap. I just feel like uh, it's not just advertising when they say that they do, do a better job of removing grease. I just feel like the, the detergent, if you buy like it, a generic brand um, is not as potent. So we're going to use a nice amount of Dawn and just kind of mix that in there with our next tool, which is the toothbrush. Okay. And the other tools, let's just go through them. Uh, I'm going to use this for cleaning the interior of the channel. It's just a toothbrush with about a one inch length in uh, bristles, which is going to be vital for getting down into the channel and then get the sack for removing the scales the next thing is not mandatory but i like these little conical uh, tipped uh, cleaners 
that you can get on Amazon. They do a great job of reaching in the chain, inside the joints and cleaning the joints. And for the same reason, I like using these little precision drivers. And I'm not going to be scratching or doing anything abrasive with these. So keep that in mind. I want to make it very clear that I don't attack the knife in any way with like a way to scratch it. But I do use these and I'll get to that later. You know, I've got some uh, Lucas Real Oil. This is extremely affordable on Amazon. Uh, you can see just how viscous that is. That's a, It's a very light oil, and I think it does a great job with Swiss Army knives. But probably the most important tool, especially if you're going to be using soap on the joints, is Ballastol. Because that will rejuvenate and penetrate and get some lubrication back into the joints quickly. Otherwise, it takes quite a bit longer, but just oil alone, I feel. So those are our tools, and let's get into it. You can see just how dirty this is. Now, I warmed up this water, so, um, you know, it's going to be a little better at removing dirt, I feel. It just penetrates a little better when you have some warm oils. We're going to bring that kind of more into view here, and I'll just... Break down the old scrub brush and just see how much of this stuff we can get off. You might actually need like a scraping tool for this particular one, so um, try to find uh, some sort of plastic material that's not going to be something that'll scratch these aluminum scales. But yeah, these are just typical of how they come from eBay, they're pretty disgusting. They don't, the sellers don't try to clean them up. And I guess for that reason, they're a little more affordable. You know, if they have to spend time cleaning them, they're gonna probably charge you more, right? So that's okay. I'll take on that task if it saves me some money, I guess. So long as in the long run, they're not completely beaters. This particular one is, um, the blade on it, which I'll show you, is completely trashed. This won't actually be added to my collection. So this is simply a guinea pig to show you how I clean. Um, this one is just in too rough a shape. Now, you might wonder, like, why did you buy something that you wouldn't add to your collection? Well, a lot of times you buy in lots, and they don't always show you the blade opened up. And that's the risk you'll take. So this is just one I did not... Um, I guess, win on, if you want to say. And uh, the risk was taken and the risk was lost. But got to make the best of it, turn lemons into lemonade, and now I can use it as a way to demonstrate how I clean the knife. So we have, we're going to just continue to do this. Like I say, I'm just going to leave the camera rolling. We aren't going to try to edit anything out. This is just meant to be a nice, relaxing cleanup video. And hopefully you guys will enjoy it. I uh, I really, really have learned a lot about Victorinox in the, in the last, I would say, month or so. Just really diving deep into the history of it and getting to know as much as I've had time to learn in that period of time. So kind of going to be um, exploring more, you know, different avenues of bringing you guys on Victorinox videos, try to do things and content that hasn't been done yet, and uh, bring you a lot of cool looking knives as well as talk about some of the ways to date the knife as well as uh, the different models that I'll review that I've picked up over that string of time but you can see this is coming off pretty clean here you're getting uh, most of that dirt off i'm just using my knee fingernail to scrape this but you could probably speed it up maybe just slightly by using some sort of plastic scraping tool i don't happen to have anything out but anything around the house will work you could probably even use like the back side of the toothbrush if you had to you know just we'll try that on the other side getting around this these rivets and things um, is crucial because if you don't um, 
clean up around those rivets when they're, they're that dirty, they will actually corrode over time. So it's uh it's probably best that you take the scales off if they're super dirty like that. Now, sometimes you don't know, but a lot of times you can kind of get an indication of how dirty they are just by looking into the scale slot. And uh, if you see a lot of muck around and inside the, the nail slot or the, the uh, tweezer slot, you kind of know. Or if the interior of the knife is just disgusting, you pretty well be sure that the inside of the scales are going to be disgusting as well. But you can see we still got some crud there and then around there. We'll spend some more time on that with a more detailed tool. But a lot of this stuff has just come off from having soaked a bit. Now you can see that one. See, it's a little more tarnished. So I, I get a little concerned when you start losing the gold around the little compressed ring there on the outside, a little, little I can't remember what they call it exactly. We'll just call it a uh, little bushing that they put on there. It goes around the pin. But if you've never looked at the profile of one of those, they're kind of interesting because if you can look and see, maybe you can clean all the soap off of that. They're flanged, so that's what holds the uh, scale on. And I have got a purpose for uh, getting my nail clean. That was gross. I got a bunch of dirt under my fingernail there. All right, so... Yeah, you have that one looking a little more rough than the other, so it might have been getting a little more corrosion. But we'll we'll continue to work on the uh, areas around those little bushings. They're a collar. That's that's what I should be using. Really. This is really what they are. They're a collar that goes around the pins that they use from the factory. Fascinating videos they've got. Um, a few that show the manufacturing process a little bit. They're very, very secretive about their uh, manufacturing process machinery. and don't uh, reveal much about how they do what they do. But if you didn't know, Victorinox produces like 45,000 knives a day. So they are pumping these suckers out in ways that no other European manufacturer is. And, uh, they're just a fat, have a fascinating history. And boy, is that one being stubborn. I might actually have to use a screwdriver a bit on that one. Just lightly scrape around the edges here. I'm not, again, trying to do anything abrasive. Just trying to loosen that dirt up so that I can scrape it away. It, it's real sticky and gooey. Kind of feels like... Uh, you know, the old bubble gum on the bottom of desks at your school. <laughs> that's got, that's about the feel we've got. Just flaking off little bits at a time. So we'll get the bubble gum off. Dried bubble gum on the bottom of my, my desk. Among other things. And I don't want to know what the rest of it is. But yeah, it's taking a little longer than I expected. So hopefully you guys are not bored by this. Hopefully you're entertained. But it just takes a little, sometimes it takes a little more time than others. But again, I'm not trying to uh, scratch this, the liner at all. I'm just trying to lift that dirt away. And it's just really gooey. And the toothbrush alone is not not removing it. So, okay, you know, I try to, I try not, I try to be, you know, as non-abrasive as possible when it comes to cleaning these. There's really no need to go crazy with, with scrubbing on them when they're stainless, right? Aluminum scales and um, stainless blades, they should not rust too much. Obviously, the older ones were made from carbon back in the back in the back in the day, but they used inox from very early on, like probably from like the 
early 20s, I'm gonna say, when uh, Victorinox started using stainless on their blades. Famous for their Inox proprietary bleed steel. Now you can see how much gunk's come off between the scales and the removal of all this junk, but looks like the uh, aluminum's been pretty well preserved. Nothing too drastic there. But those scales were a mess. They're just nasty. Now, you can clean the interior of the scales if you intend to use them again. But like I said, I don't really like removing them unless I absolutely have to, just because when you take them off, and especially the older ones, you just lose that little bit of plastic around where that flange is. It kind of tears it as you remove it. And so the scales never look like brand new scales again once you remove them. So if you can keep them on, and if you feel like you can get away with keeping them on there, then do so. That's my recommendation. A little more gunk down there. Okay. But now let's uh, dry this off just a touch on the outside so that I can open the blades. Um, another tool, obviously, I didn't show that earlier, but we've just got some dry rags off to the side here. Going to kind of clean up our mess below us. I'm going to move that out of the way temporarily so that I have some room to work and still be able to show you guys what I'm doing. But I have not scrubbed the other stuff yet. So we just want to kind of look inside the channel and then once I do that, we can get it wet again. But just want to have a dry knife so that I can operate the blades a little better. And you can see this is why this will not be in my collection. It looks more like a Warncliffe blade. You know, whoever the previous owner was, it just um, used this a ton or didn't really have a mastery of sharpening. One of the two. But yeah, I just took off a lot of metal there. For as old as this knife is, I'm going to say it's probably the latter. Right, because it's not that old, and he would have had to use a ton to take off that amount of metal, unless he really just didn't know how to sharpen very well, or she, I guess it could have been a she, right? I don't know, whoever the previous owner was. Um, Okay, so we've just got, I didn't even tell you the model of this, I, maybe y'all figured that out. This is just their Tinker model. You got the screwdriver. And the two layers, two opening, the opening layer and the blade layer, right? And you've got the uh, spear point blade and what used to be a large spear point blade and the Phillips driver. Now you see how this is sort of stained along where that plastic is? A lot of times right here at the corners will we be able to tell, okay, I need to take the scale off because it's going to be dirty right there. And where the little notch is. Okay. So maybe just use that as a guide. But we're going to scrub the blades a little bit. You'll be able to see that there is. Uh, there's some muck. On the blade. Like right there you can see. We'll try to get that cleaned up. Best we can. But we're going to uh, just clean the opening layer first. And then we'll get to the blades. So we can get to both sides all at once. Alright. So give it a little dunk. And I'm just going to clean up near the pivot. Let's get the dish back down here so we can see again. Sorry about that, guys. I do it at times have to look around the camera, so sometimes I'm not paying full attention to where it's centered. And you guys aren't always able to see. I try to avoid that. was pretty dirty there that's really come a lot cleaner since I did that it was just stuff stuck all in the nail neck there I 
All right, so while these are open, I'm gonna go ahead and attack those back springs. And uh, just kind of do it from the side like that. I will say also with the use of this particular, uh, whatever make of Dawn fluid I got here, it's pretty nice smelling. Got a nice little scent to it. All right, so then you've got your back tools here. I guess we can go ahead and do those. We'll just go ahead and close the other two. And those already feel a lot better. Getting a little bit of snap in there. Um, but let's open these back tools. And you're going to have a little gap there that needs scrubbed. All right. Let's see what that looks like afterward. Still kind of looking around the camera, so there may have been a spot or two I missed. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the tang here. All right, and we can close that down. We'll take care of our awl blade. in the action here just uh, rinsing it as I clean it got the awl blade with the hole in it so we're uh, a little ahead of the dating thing that I'm gonna do later but I will tell you when you have an awl blade hole the eyelet as this one does there you go now that the soap's out of it you can see if you have that, you know that the date on the knife is post-85, because the 85 is when that hole came in. All right. So I'm going a little quick way to date a knife, if you have no other clues. Okay, so I think that is probably pretty good down in the channel there. And uh, when we close that, we get a little snap. That's good. Now, here's one of those places where I like to use the conical tool. The little areas behind the two uh, back layer tools have gaps. A lot of dirt likes to collect in there. And uh, while I should have gotten most of that just by scrubbing, I'm not really seeing any dirt come up. So that's actually good. Yeah, very, very little dirt coming up, so I think I've got that fairly clean, but there's there's one way to do it, and I can kind of drag that between there to clean more. I'll just do all the little recesses here. Okay, so even clean the key ring with them. Okay, so I think we've got our... Uh, Areas around the collars clean. Not seeing anything major there. And everything looks good around that pin for the back tools. So I think we're good there. So let's open up these main blades again and then we'll get in to uh, cleaning the channel out. Let me get a quick dry here and just drying it off. Let's get this out of the way again. Oh, clean up our mess a little bit. Okay, so we've got a 
yeah, it's good action on that back. So I'm happy with that. Some some dirt there. You can see it's kind of collected on the blade some and down there. So let's get that clean. And then we'll work on the channel. Let's scrub the pivot area here. will be a little trick I can use if the toothbrush doesn't do the job here because it does get rather thick at the top of the tang when you're looking down on it with it closed. Now I'm flicking water up so hopefully that's not hitting the camera lens. So we'll just avoid doing that right now because that has a tendency to kind of sling water around but whoop, there we go. Let's knock the camera. That looks pretty clean. Maybe a little bit left there to do, but in any case, we get the dirt off from around the tang area and the blade. That looks okay. Well, what was this one? This was, uh, yeah, you can see the tang stamp, non-touching four line with a big V, I want to say. So not particularly old. Okay, and now we're going to look at this other blade. We've already kind of got the snap back just by cleaning what we have. I don't really see... Yeah, there's a little bit there. Let's get that scraped out of there. You see what I see there? A little bit of muck there right at the tang. All right. Most of this is coming off pretty easy. And obviously, you know, it's going to take a little longer with me in front of the camera trying to explain everything than just kind of doing it on my own. But I want to share the experience with you guys. So that's fine with me. And I said, this was not going to be a um, one that I cleaned up for use or for the collection. It's, it's, I don't know what I'll do with it. I just maybe use it for parts or something later on. Or sell it for parts. Or even give it to Matt. Maybe he can use it. Who knows? I'm sure we can work out something. But it won't go to waste, I can promise you. Okay, so. You kind of see the after there. Let's see if we can get the light on her. There we go. See how clean she is. That look a lot better, doesn't it? Now we're going to clean out our channel. Did I do the top of the tanks? I guess I didn't really do the top very well. Let's do that first. I'm just going to scrub that. And like I said, there's another way that I'll get these clean if they don't get just like spotless with the scrub. A lot of times the toothbrush just isn't enough to get this really, really bad spots. Sometimes it is. Take a peek at it. Okay, so there's the back. They're clean. Pretty darn clean. I'm not going to use the uh, other tab. This one's not. Okay, so this is a good way of showing you guys. Well, it is. It's just kind of dark. But what I would do if it gets so corroded and crudded is just do a light scraping this just pull that out like this with those little metal precision screwdrivers and um, that will get the, loosen up that dirt kind of like I did around the 
the collars, right? Just enough to loosen it. Um, but there is another little use I use for the uh, smaller of my two little precision screwdrivers. And that comes in right here at the end. All these are feeling so much better as far as their action, so I'm really happy with that. I think we're going to have a really smooth action knife once I get done. But you can just see how dirty it is down in there. And we don't want all that dirt getting on our clean pivots. We're going to scrub that out. And what I use now for that is the toothbrush. Or excuse me, toothbrush, no. The paintbrush. It, it works wonders because it uh, is not abrasive, but it gets in there really deep. And you still have room left over, you can see, to kind of push. Be uh, quite aggressive with how much you can uh, put pressure on it. We're just gonna go back and forth. Clean off a brush, give it a rinse. Let's see where we're at. We'll also note that you need a big enough bin in here to get, a, if you're not gonna be doing it over the sink, you know, big enough, wide enough to get your knife in there you're gonna have to start closing knife tools and such but that looks pretty good right there i didn't have to really do much seems like it just got loosened up from being wet so this hasn't been the stickiest or hardest or more diff most difficult knife i've had to clean for sure i am just going to spend a little more time right up here in the rivet area that does tend to be the area where dirt will collect and it's more difficult to remove so while I can't really see anything, I don't have the best view of it right here, actually. But I didn't really see much. But in any case, just, yeah, spend a little more time up in this region of the knife. And that will uh, benefit you. Get a little more dirt out of there. Okay, so we're going to rinse that. going to let it drain through the channel there and I think we're going to be done with the soapy water unless we just run into some other kind of issue where we can't uh, close the blades all right so let's get that out of the way and oh, just one more quick examination of just how dirty that water is all right so it gets pretty filthy now we're going to dry up a little bit And uh, got to be kind of careful when you use rags on the knives because um, there is a tendency, especially with like can openers and stuff, to, for it to snag the threads. So just kind of take it slow and dry the surfaces as you can. There we go. Well, this is not as easy to do around a camera, I will tell you. I would normally be so much faster at this. But here you go. Pretty dried out now. And then for drying the channel, there's this little trick. Remember I showed you this thin cloth earlier. Maybe I didn't. Hopefully I did. If not, I'm showing it to you now. But it's just some uh, fabric. It's kind of stretchy. It has a little bit of ply, you know, pliable properties to it. And I just kind of put it over the channel like that. I grabbed that thinner uh, screwdriver and just kind of rub to dry it out. And get the last remaining amount of dirt out of there. And we're not trying to apply a bunch of pressure. We're just trying to kind of use that as a, a way to scrape. And if you have to double up your fabric, you can do that too, if it's poking through. 
But to start out with something thin that's going to fit inside the channels, that's the kind of the point of having something thin like that. Okay, I think that's going to do it. Well, here's what we look like now. Considerably cleaner. And fortunately, I was feeling the action as I'm kind of moving the blades in and out to manipulate the, where I want to be. And that one's not perfect, but it's really the only one that's not even closing with the snap at this point. All of them are self-closing pretty much. And yeah, okay, all of them are. But that one's staying up a little bit. I don't know if maybe we can improve on that or not. That might be just sort of a weak spring. See how that's kind of sticking there, and then I have to press it all the way down. So I don't know if something's bent, maybe. Could be, you know, with these knives. Just as old and used. It's hard to know what uh, the history of them was. But we'll just pretend like it's working for uh, the sake of time, and we'll show you how I oil the blades on this. Um, now, typically, if I'm getting really sticky action which I'm not on this one, but that we'll just pretend we are. I'm going to go ahead and give an application of Ballastol right off. And we're going to just spray the end of the pivot like that. I'm just going to let it sit there in a sec. All right, just kind of penetrate into the pivot. And then we're going to do the other side. This kind of foams. And here is where you can use another one of your little tools here. And I'm just going to spread that around. Kind of get it to go everywhere around the pivot. And they're just really handy for that sort of thing. Now, I will just use the excess that's on this little tool that I picked up and now I can apply it here to the screwdriver and I'm going to apply it right inside the pivot on either side I'm going to apply it to the two little holes too so on that side oh trying to go the wrong way there we go dummy again being blinded by not having the thing right in front of you. All right. And we'll do the same over here. And hopefully we have enough. Maybe just pick up more. I don't know. It's not, it seems to be getting pretty dry, so may have to pick up more from the pivot. Kind of rubbed over here. It doesn't take much ballast all. It really doesn't. It goes a long way. And you'll know that <laughs> it goes a long way because it's tough to get off your hands but okay so let's just check the action now and see if we're at where we need to be with it oh yeah that smoothed up i don't know if you could hear that but it got even quieter as i moved it about the fourth time and that's got plenty of action so i'm happy with that over here Got a little bit of grit I can kind of feel going away. There might be a little something to clean out of the pivot after I'm done with this. We'll check that we get action there. Let's check that small blade. Okay, so the small blade's right here. And it's got that smaller pivot. You can see it's picked up stuff there. So when you see like the debris within the oil, we're just going to wipe that. that go away yeah and it just picks that up and then we can try again and see if we hear any more grit no grit not hearing any grit so well, that's good so there's that happy with the screwdriver blade tried the all blade earlier and it sounded fine yep there's a little bit of grit in there so let's see if we can remove anything in there i can hear a little bit of just a little crackling sound when you move the blade 
indication of some grit. Maybe that will help. There is still just a little bit left in there towards the bottom part of where, when I get to about that position, there seems to be a small amount of grit. So that should be on that back side, I would think. Let's try to clean it again. Patience sometimes is required, especially when you get a stubborn one that does not want to. Does not want to get any action back. I've had some that are just completely stubborn. It took me hours to get the action back in them. But with enough time and patience, a lot of times they will come back. Okay, I'm happy with that. So let's try our opening layer. Got the 90 degree pivot on this side, and that sounds really good. A little locking hub on this one. You guys don't know what a locking hub is. See the little ramp right there? The center of my thumb that indicates that this has the locking hub and that was made after 1991 that's when they introduced that it's just to make the can opener blade in the full position harder to release that way when you're using the screwdriver it doesn't fold over on you so a nice little introduction there little locking hub now i'm not getting that super snappy snap on the clothes i'll just do some movements like this Kind of loosen up the area where it's maybe got a little resistance. And yeah, it's sounding better. It's just rubbing on something. And there's not really much I can do with that. Oh, I found a little spot of dirt. See that? See if we can get that off of there. Is that on the main blade? That is on the main blade. Let's uh, have a little peek at that. Yeah, right, right there. You see it? Oh, look at that clean. Really stuck on. There we go. Looks like I got it off. Okay, but yeah, the. It's it's hanging on something, so I don't know if that means we're gonna have to straighten something. But I'm not gonna do that on camera. I don't. I don't. I'm gonna have to investigate to see if maybe the main blade's interfering with it. Maybe I'm holding the knife or I'm pinching it a little bit. Let's see if we can. It needs to be closed it okay if I do that. Might just be the way I'm holding the knife. Sometimes I squeeze it. Yeah. See if I squeeze the scales a little bit, it hangs up. But if I don't, bring my hand down here, it seems to want to close. Fine if I do that. I don't know. Very, you know, temperamental. So, okay, let's look at our can opener blade. Kind of work the pivot. That's feeling pretty good. And we're going to kind of do the same thing over here where we... Kind of work that last third all in one motion. And that kind of trains the knife to have a nice smooth action from that 90 position down. I've even um, had some success having it at the 90 position and then kind of pushing it with a lot of force like that. If you do that enough times, sometimes you can kind of get the action back in it. That looks like that'll work. Pretty happy with that. Satisfied. So all we need to do now is clean up those scales or replace them with some new ones. And we'll have a nice, healthy, clean Swiss Army knife. Now, obviously, you'll have to sharpen your blade. I'm not going to. This one's This one's had its day in the sun, and it's about time to uh, retire it. Still got a lot of blade left you could be used, but as far as a collector's piece, I mean, this this could definitely be, don't, don't get me wrong, this could be a user, but when I'm looking for a collector's piece, this is definitely not what I'm looking for. So as far as like a collector's piece, yeah, no, I'm going to I'm gonna find a better tinker than this. <laughs> There's enough of them out there. They make 45,000 knives a day. Surely they make enough tinkers I can find a better one than this. 
um, because this is one of their more popular models. But in any case, there you go. There's a two-layer cleanup. Um, they're going to get a little more difficult as you increase the number of layers and you can get these really narrow channels. That's where this toothbrush is just invaluable because no matter the width, you can get in and clean those channels out. So I do recommend getting like a one inch soft bristle brush or something like that for the cleaning. But uh, there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works got a massive advertising uh, freebie today from me, but uh, nice little work mat keeps everything nice and dry on your workstation when you're doing wet jobs like this. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell to be made aware of videos when they drop. We'll see you next time. Take care.